Hey, welcome to the All Star Channel. It's cold out here today in the shop. I think today's high was like 28 degrees, but enough of the weather forecast. We've got another one of these big giant white whales behind us to work on. I've done several videos and they're all different, I swear. Um, this one has its own issues. Uh, right now, it's this is an 05, by the way, and it's got the 5.7 liter. It's an E150. And uh, it has a trouble code P2270. So the battery was extremely weak and what I did was I grabbed the code before I swapped out the battery. So that way, uh, you know, I kind of knew what was going on. The owner told me that the check engine light was on and I did confirm it was. Anyhow, I'm going to show you how to diagnose that O2 sensor. Make sure that it's, uh, you know, definitely defective and that putting a new one in will solve our problem. So. Let's get to the video. Okay, sorry if I'm a little overexposed here. I gotta, I gotta have the light on or the door up because the van's running. Anyhow, I got a P2270 and I had taken a picture of it on my cell phone when I used a quick uh, scan tool, a little cheapy, just to pull the code. And then the battery was so dead, I had trouble starting it. I swapped out the battery. So now, of course, it cleared that trouble code, but the issue's still there. I'll show you the live data in a second. So the problem we're having with the 2270 is bank one, sensor two. So that's going to be the passenger side. Bank one is your number one cylinders on that side. Uh, the rear oxygen sensor back here is near the catalytic converter right there. So what we'll have to do is remove this, what's called the doghouse, and I'll show you how to do that in a second to gain access to it because getting it from below is, is pretty tricky. It's kind of tight, but the connector is pretty much up there at the top. So we'll do some testing before we swap it out. So what it's saying with that uh, bank one sensor two is that it's lean. And let me show you some live data. Let me show you the live data right here. So here's bank one sensor one up top here and it's switching nice. You see the values going up to 0.8 down to 0.1. So it's fluctuating. In fact, we could graph that here. Let's do that real quick. So I'll show it to you. Let's bring down our time. So you can see it's going rich to lean, rich to lean. That's what a normal upstream O2 sensor should do. And then here's the uh, bank two. Let's pull that up, lower it down. And that one's doing the same. So rich to lean, rich to lean, that's good. We want to see that. Let's uh, close that out now. We don't need that. And um, right now, here's our bank one and bank two rear O sensors, number two sensors, so in the back. And as you can see on bank one here, we're at point, hopefully you can see, is 0.29 pretty much steady. It's not, and we don't want the rears to fluctuate, don't get me wrong, if you don't know about how to read an O2 sensor, the rears we want steady like this one on the uh, bank two is at 0 0.78, 0 0.8 basically. See how it's a nice flat line there? And I hope the glare isn't like killing it. But anyway, that's what we wanna see. That's checking the uh, catalytic efficiency back there. So there's a whole, you can spend days studying O2 sensors. We're not getting into that. Basically just to diagnose this one. So what I'm gonna do is put this down on the seat, set the camera up, and I'm gonna rev the engine. We wanna try to make bank one uh, go rich. We wanted to bring it up so we can check to see, you know, is it lying or is it working. Um, then what we'll do is, if it doesn't move, we'll do some further testing. I don't know if you guys can hear me, hopefully you can, but we want to follow this right up here, the top graph, and I'm going to do some snap throttles where I rev it, basically is what it is. And we want to see if we can make that go rich, so let's see what happens here. Basically, we're getting pretty much no reaction. So let's get to the next step. All right, so we need to remove the doghouse and there's two parts to it. There's this part here with all this stuff on it, you know, the coin holder and the cup holders. And then there's the second part. So this front part, what you want to do is, I better get in the van here. I'm going to need some leverage because hopefully you can hear me all right. I don't have a mic and the camera's like way over there. So. These usually are glued in <laughs> with soda, coffee, all kinds of crap that spills back here. So you got to get a good grip on it and really yank up. So I'm going to pull and smack up on this a little bit here. 
thing, so let's go. There we go. We've got to break the seal, so to speak. All right. So let's get this out of the way. Oh, yeah. Wait till you guys see how beautiful this looks back here. Um, you always find good stuff, you know, especially loose change. That's a lot of, a lot of loose change. I just throw it back in the coin holder. So then there's these connectors or um, clamps right here and here. There's two on each, and this one you just pull it up, release it. One over here, you reach around. I'll show you this up close in a second in case you're not familiar with it. And then you've got the same setup over here on the driver's side. So let me get those loose. And then what you need to do is, once those are loose, make a little room. So what I do is I pull these covers back. Just yank them back. They sometimes they'll pop. Oop. Sometimes they'll pop right off. But just pull it out of their way because you'll need some. You'll need some room right here to move this. Let me get that loose. Okay. So now you want to pull up on these, and these these can be stuck too if they've been been there some time. This one's not bad. Oop, stuff coming out of the dashboard. All right. Ew, look at this. Did this. Oh, yeah. What is this? Oh, nice. Anybody need a power bar from like 2005? Here you go. Gross. We'll chew on that later. And then just lift this up and we'll take it out over on that side. Now we have good access to the engine back here. All right, let's get this out. Look how nice, look how pretty this is. See? See all that crap? Just glues everything together. And get the other piece. So basically, the front part of the doghouse has these little clips that this just drops into. There's three of them here, and it just drops down. So you're pulling up, and you get it out of the way. So we've got a lot of room now to work. Anyhow, I want to show you where the O2s are. So that's the bank one, sensor one right there, O2. Here's your bank two, sensor one. Driver's side, here's the steering wheel right there. And now your connector, at least, anyhow, let me turn my light, is this blue one here for the Bank 1 Sensor 2 O2 sensor. So that's what we're going to have to uh, get disconnected here and start testing. And then your Bank 1 or Bank 2 Sensor 2 is right down. Let me see if I can get it. It's a blue connector. Uh, I can't get it on film for you, but it's right in that area if you need to access that. So let's uh, let me get this off the clip here, and we'll start doing some testing. It's a four wire, right? Yes, it's a four wire. All right, so let's get this connector off of the harness here, and you'll see this little there's like a little clip right there. It's no biggie. Just push that. It kind of slides off. So there we go. So you get a little bit of slack. Now this is a four wire, and we've got the two. Two white wires are a heater circuit. Normally, you're not going to get the code we got if you have a heater circuit problem. It'll throw in a different trouble code. So we're not worried about those. And then we've got the black and the gray. So this is our... Uh, i got to double check. I'm going to check a wiring diagram. I believe the black is our signal wire. And the gray is going to be ground. So let me double check that. And uh, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've got the scan tool set up on bank one sensor two right here, and I've got the connector unplugged. I did check the, the wiring diagram, and our black wire to the O2 sensor on this side here is the signal wire. The gray is the ground. I just wanted to make sure, and the two whites were the heaters. I think I mentioned that before. So when you um, compare this, when you, you, know, you have your connector in, hopefully you can see what I'm doing there, um, you look at where your black is, your black wire, which is the signal, and in this case, right now it's top right. So what I'll do is 
I'm going to back probe this top right. I'm just sliding this in there. I'm not spreading the terminals. And what I want you to do is keep an eye on the screen right over here. And what we're doing is looking for uh, the integrity of the system to make sure everything's working well, that the uh, PCM you know, knows what it's doing or knows what's going on anyway. And then I'm going to take my other, you know, this is just a wire I got right here with a pin in it. Hopefully you can see that my light battery's getting low. Um, touching this to ground, which right here is our transmission case. And what we want to see on the screen is a drop. We want to see that go to zero. So let me do that. Let me scratch it. There you go. It bottomed out. So I'm just tapping this on ground, I'm kind of scratching it in because... There's a lot of corrosion on this casing. So every time I do that, the computer is grounding it out. I'll just hold it on there for a second. There we go. So it's good there. And now what we could do is give it some uh, some power. So I have a 12-volt uh, battery charger, which you can't see. And I'm just going to hold on to this connector right here and then touch it. Right now, we should see it go up. So it's spiked up a little bit. I'm off of it now. Let me touch it again. So it wants to do something. I don't know. We probably don't have enough. Uh, we're like a resistor. So the, the important part here is that it's doing something. And uh, we should be fine with a new sensor now. So we've tested that the computer works good. We'll get the old O2 sensor out, plug it in, and um, take it from there. So what I noticed here is it looks like 0 0.29, 0 0.3 is, I guess, a bias voltage. The, by the way, the ignition is on. So I do have, you know, have the ignition on to do this test. So they're both 0 0.3. Let me take you for a little joy ride. So I'm going to try to hold the camera as steady as possible. Here's our connector to the O2 sensor or our wiring. And um, let me see on the camera here on the lens. So if you take this and you follow it right down there, so there's a uh, heat shield that's around it. It makes it a little tricky to get to from down below. So I'm going to attempt to get it up there at the top. I've got, uh, well, I think it's 22 millimeter, but I've got one of these guys and, or one of these, we might do a combo action. We'll see how it goes. I'll spray a little bit of PB blaster down there and try to work it on out and I'll let you know how it goes because I won't be able to film it unfortunately my hands will be in the way you won't see a thing the new sensors in and now I'm just watching the uh, bank twos here they're still at 0 0.3 each one and hopefully both of them will start rising now if you recall that that one just stayed at 0 0.3 or bank one sensor two so I wanted to mention uh, something that's pretty important here is testing the ground side of the circuit also. I showed the signal side, but the ground side is the gray wire on the O2 sensor. And you want to follow that into the harness. And what I did was I took a test light from battery positive and lightly touched that terminal going into the harness to the you know PCM side. And that light lit up real bright, real clear which means we had a good ground. I also hooked up a voltmeter just to double check, and I believe we had about 20 millivolts, maybe less. So that's a good ground. That's like 0 0.02. Uh, you don't want to see voltage on that. You know, definitely don't. So make sure you check both powers and grounds before you condemn anything, just to make sure to do it right. So let's get back to the video. Uh, these will warm up, and we'll see what happens. All right, there they go. Looks like they're starting to climb now. Good. See that right there? Right there. Let's see where it settles at. So it looks like our bank one sensor two is at point eight. And uh, bank two, sensor two is a little weak there, 0 0.65 right now, 0 0.7, but it might go up a little bit. It's older. They can get a little weak. It's almost at 700 millivolts now. So that's good. Nice to see. This is nice, nice, steady, straight. 
in case you don't believe me. Oh, this new one's right there. Right down in there. So, that's that. Just to confirm everything, I'm gonna give it a snap throttle. We should see some reaction, but for the most part, the sensor should stay rich. So move just a little bit. Let me slow it down. There we go. So that's good. Beautiful, that's what we want to see. And we should have no codes when that comes on. I do have the ignition on. There you go, so it's just, just a P1000, which is, uh, for Ford, that's telling you the codes were reset. That's fine, escape. The good news is the van is fixed, at least for that problem. Anyway, it's got plenty of other problems. But um, here's what's left of the old O2. Look at, look at this stuff. Here, here's what I had to do. Look at this, it's completely chopped off. And I'm gonna tell you why I had to chop it off here in a second. This is just the guts in there. Anyway, let me throw this crap down. Um, I had a heck of a time getting this one out. So you've got this kind of O2 sensor and if you, or a socket removal tool here. If you're not familiar, it has a big slot in there so that when the wire's on, you can slip around and get this on there. If this is, you know, pinned in right here. So you can use a 3 8 and unscrew it that way and also install it. Then you've got a little bit of a heavier duty one, which is this kind. Same thing, put your 3 8 in there. It's a little lower profile, slips right on and in and out with this one. It's a little hard to get to on this particular van to use this, but I tried, trust me, I tried a lot. And it was not budging. So I busted out the torch, which is over there. You can't see it. And wound up hacking the wires off. So. What you do is take a pair of dykes, cutters, clip it right there at the top so that you can get your 22 millimeter socket over top. And this is an impact deep socket so that this, let me show you here basically. So when this was cut, which you can see it right here, you know, now I was able to take this, go right over top and then get a half inch ratchet on there. Really had to put a lot of pressure. I had to heat it. I had to get hot. I don't have any video to share with you here on YouTube because they'll demonetize me with all the curse words. I'll be here all day long or some of you call it cussing. Yeah, same thing. So we're not going to show it. They screw out and they screw in. But let me just tell you, if you run into an issue and here's the issue that I had with it. Where's the other one? I got one. I got an O2 here out of a Nissan, but it was pretty much like the stock one here in this Ford. It was like this kind of height. Here's I think this is an NTK out of a Ford. Um, let me line up the, where the 22 uh, hex is there. Now look at the height difference. I don't know if it shows on camera that much, but we're here and then this one's up here. So the problem that I had with that one is this socket was not deep enough to go all the way down and grab onto the hex, onto the, you know, to unscrew it. So what I had to do is get in there with a grinder, a small cutoff tool, and hack this out right here. That's what all that junk is you just saw. So I basically cut this top hat or cap off so that I could have uh, room for this socket to slide on. Then with heat and a whole lot of muscle, that sucker finally broke free. So man, I'm glad that nightmare's over. So you don't really need a fancy scan tool to do what we did here to diagnose it properly. Yeah, you could go ahead and you know, fire the parts cannon at it. If you want to swap out the O2, most likely you got this code. That's what the issue is. But we definitely checked to make sure. Now, you know, that's up to you. I think these cheaper uh, scan tools now, they work really good. Maybe 50 to 100 bucks. You can get one that graphs. That way you can see those uh, voltages. And I think it was like the bias on this unplugging these O2s, the rear ones anyway, was 300 millivolts. So that's 0.3. And uh, on your rare O2s, you definitely want that number high when it's working right, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21,
you know, 0 0.8, somewhere up there, 7, 800 millivolts, that means you're uh, most likely your catalytic converter is doing its thing. You don't want to see it doing this. And I have videos on that where the cat's bad and it's oscillating up and down, high and low, rich and lean, like the front O2s. Those you do want to see. So if you're not sure that's how that goes, you want a nice steady line with these and a high line, not a low one, that's for sure. Anyway, hope that helps you out, gives you some advice on that. Um, I just turned around to see if anything else caught my mind and it doesn't right now. So leave your comments and your questions down below. Click that like button if you get a chance. If you enjoyed the video, hope it helped you out. And uh, check me out on Instagram, that's Ozstar, and it's the number one after that. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Take it easy.